Hi there, my name is Tyler. I'm a kinesiologist here at Pivotal Physiotherapy. I identify as a gay man who's cisgender, and today I'm going to talk to you a presentation about queer pronouns, inclusive language, and how we can make physiotherapy a better experience for queer patients. Growing up in Canada, I had access to inclusive healthcare all my life. However, I know this isn't the case for everyone. Situations like this has inspired me to make physiotherapy and our industry a more inclusive space for all patients. In a clinical setting, there's a couple areas where we can direct our focus. Pronouns and inclusive language are a great place to start. That's what this video is gonna cover. Let's start with the big picture. What does it mean to be queer? Being queer is any member of our community who identifies outside of a cisgendered or heteronormative identity. So people who are gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, agender. It's an umbrella term that makes us all feel like we belong to a space. Let's have a discussion on why pronouns can be helpful. Number one, they're a great icebreaker. Patients who are new and are queer may not be comfortable sharing their own pronouns right off the bat because they don't know you. So if you share your pronouns, it's a great place to start to make them feel welcomed and safe in our clinic. Pronouns actually help reduce delay of treatments for transgender and gender non-conforming patients. 28% of TGNC patients will reduce the time frame that they seek treatment because they fear discrimination. Using images and pronouns on your social media sites can help access those patients before they get injured more so. As a clinical team, understanding our patients' pronouns can help us avoid microaggressions. Microaggressions can offend our patients and can create a very unhealthy environment for patients who may be questioning their identity. If we can create a socially safe space by respecting and understanding what they identify as, we can have them happier, healthier, and seeing us a lot more frequently. I understand that pronouns and using pronouns can be scary, confusing, so let's talk about some of the roadblocks that you might experience in your journey with our patients here. Number one, patients may be confused as to why you've asked them for their pronouns. They may not be used to being asked in their healthcare journey, or it just could be new to them altogether. As we move forward in society, we want to establish a welcoming space everywhere. Explain to them that this is a practice we do with all of our patients, and that it may just help break down barriers for other people. Number two, sometimes we don't know what pronouns to use, or you end up using the wrong pronoun. If a patient hasn't disclosed to you their pronouns, ask them in a private and professional manner. Take them aside in a closed room or with curtains drawn and ask them, I'd like to respect you, what pronouns do you use? Or, are you comfortable sharing your pronouns with me? If you do make a mistake using the wrong pronouns with a patient, it's okay. Identify your mistake, correct it, and apologize. This will show that you're actively trying to respect your patient and affirm their identity. Number three, your patients may think that you're pushing an agenda by using pronouns. Unfortunately, not everyone is as accepting as we want them to be, but they still deserve compassionate care from us. Some strategies that you can use for this is let them know that every patient has asked their pronouns. It's not just them. Number two, state it matter-of-factly. It won't be such a personal question. You can also ask it every time you meet them to make sure that it becomes more regular and comfortable. And finally, don't be afraid to use your professional judgment. If you feel like this question is going to upset them or come in the way of their care, don't ask it, that's okay. We're gonna talk about some general language, rules, tips, strategies. Here's where we can learn how to be more gender neutral in our practice. The biggest general rule I can give you is reflect the language your patients use. Something like that may include referring to their partner as a partner instead of a wife or husband, boyfriend or girlfriend. So very gender specific terms that we don't always find appropriate. Secondly, maybe your parents, your patient may not have a dad or a mom, or they have two moms or two dads. So say parent, guardian, how is your family doing? If you're taking a patient history, ask them for genetic history instead of family history. A lot of people who are queer don't have good experiences coming out and are no longer affiliated with their family. So it can be a hard topic to discuss. For example, you may have a woman who comes in and identifies as queer. She uses she, them pronouns and typically has romantic relationships with females. In this case, it's appropriate to use she and them pronouns equally and interchangeably. But we don't want to refer to her as a lesbian because that's not the language that she's used. She identifies as queer, so we refer to her as queer. 
If you have any more questions about being gender inclusive, feel free to reach out to me. Finally, here are some strategies that a clinic can implement to create a more safer space for our queer patients. Number one is clinic imagery, making sure that you're posting images, using brochures, writing blog articles about queer issues as well. Changing the signage in your bathrooms to being all gendered or universal can help create safe spaces as well. Inclusive paperwork is a great opportunity to set the tone. That's going to be your first impression with patients. Make sure that they have the option to include their own pronouns and avoid gender specific issues like pregnancy or testicular health. If you have to, give them an option for non-applicable instead of male or female only. In June, you'll typically see lots of images, posts, videos shared on social media advocating for queer progression and queer inclusion. Feel free to share these on your own social media or your professional accounts. This will help patients realize that you are working to making your practice a safer space for them. Now, if you're really worried about stirring the pot, take a breath and I'm here to tell you it's okay, it probably won't happen. 91.87% of Canadians are comfortable with having a gay neighbor or relative. 87.6% of Canadians are comfortable having transgender neighbor or relatives. I don't think you'll end up receiving a lot of backlash if you ask a patient for a pronoun. Pride Month is a time to celebrate, so celebrate. Use pins, share posts, go out to events. We'll be happy to have you there as a part of our community, even if you're just an ally. So in summary, let's just revisit what we talked about today. Staff should start to implement gender neutral and gender inclusive practices. That includes our front desk staff, our kins, our therapists, and our office staff. Mistakes are gonna happen. Acknowledge your mistakes, apologize for them, and move on. Don't avoid the conversation though, it's okay. Terminology and pronouns shouldn't be thought of as labels for people, but rather as reflective language that helps affirm their identity as a patient. Your professional and personal imagery, online and in person, should reflect the diversity of the patients that you treat. This includes gender, race, and sexual orientation. Affirming care starts from the moment your patient finds your clinic. That means intake paperwork, primary encounters, and our front desk staff should be the start of affirming care. Pride Month can be a tricky topic for some businesses to cover. However, the progressive nature of Canada and my personal experiences reassure me that celebrating that month and that experience will help queer patients feel welcomed in the clinic. Here are some of the resources I used in preparing for this video, along with a few others in case you want to learn more. Of course, if you don't want to use these, you can always ask me and I'll be happy to help. As we wrap up this video, I just want to take a moment to thank you for spending some time with me today to learn about inclusivity and queer spaces and queer language. I'm passionate about helping patients and helping clinical teams create a safer space for their queer patients and making the physio journey way more great. I don't know. <laughs> I panicked. I panicked. Can we use that, please? Just cut the end. <laughs>